So I, like many of you guys, have been thoroughly enjoying the Fallout TV show. If somehow you haven't seen it yet, you should absolutely check it out on Amazon Prime. It's a really good and faithful adaptation of the source material, and somehow they managed to tell a relatively compelling story while also retaining the same tone and vibe of the original games. And while I'm not here to review the show in this video, though I would happily offer my thoughts if you're interested in a video on that. Let me know in the comment section if you want to see that video. This video rather is all about the original Fallout game, where it all started. You see, now the Fallout franchise is known to be tied to Bethesda Game Studios. However, it wasn't always the case. And in fact, Fallout 3 was the first game that Bethesda Game Studios actually put together with the Fallout franchise. Fallout actually began all the way back in 1994. A guy by the name of Tim Kaine actually started the development of Fallout when it was originally supposed to just be a framework for a new game engine based on the GURPS RPG system. GURPS just being an acronym for the generic universal role-playing system System, which is uh, it's similar to how you might see something with like Dungeons and Dragons being a role play system. GURPS is just a different version of that. And after working on the project for a little bit and putting more and more developers on it, they eventually reworked it into a spiritual successor for another game they had made. That game was called Wasteland, as you can see from this video of the original 1988 PC game posted by Squake, Squawknet, Squawknet, I'm gonna go with that. So funnily enough, Fallout actually started as a spiritual successor to a different game from 1988 that very few people remember or have even heard of, but this is where it technically drew its inspiration. War, war never changes. But regardless, they worked on it for a few years, and in 1997, we got the launch of Fallout, a post-apocalyptic role-playing game, a game that you can still play today. And as you can see, launched September 30th, 1997, developed by Interplay and published by Bethesda Softworks, not because they were the original ones, but because they now own the rights to all of the Fallout franchise since they bought it from Interplay back in 2000 and... I think it was 2005 or 2006 they actually officially got the rights to it but eventually fallout 3 would come out in 2008 being their first game with the franchise but after the show i wanted to go back and see where it all started see what made this franchise so special why did bgs want the franchise so bad in 2006 and 7 before they started working on their next game what made it so unique and is it still worth playing? But as you can see, you can actually play the game now and this is the actual footage of the intro sequence of the game, just like you would have seen back in 1997 cutting edge graphics look at these cinematics but it's a little wonky you can see it's like cropped off weirdly that's because the resolution of modern displays is obviously way higher than you would have had back then which i think we can tweak in the settings but it's just cool to see how far we've come that this footage you're seeing was like cutting edge cinematics back then and yet it still captures the vibe and tone of fallout really really well You could see where it all started. All the Mr. Handy stuff is still here. The Vault Boy is still there. The devastation and post-apocalypticism is still there. It's all present. Let's go new game and launch in. Now you can see here already we have options for playable characters. I'm gonna choose Albert. He's a charismatic leader of a small vocal minority of the vault population that is considering life on the outside world dedicated to the role of a negotiator. He's often able to communicate efficiently between different parties. Interesting, okay. And if we wanted to modify, we could do this and we could tweak each of the stats a little bit if we wanted to, to really fine tune our character as we want. You can see it's a very robust RPG. They're not messing around here, but I'm just gonna go with the archetype they've already built. Look at this. Uh, you're here, good. We've got a problem, a big one. The controller chip for our water purification system. Recognize that from the, the show? Coast? can't make another one, and the process is too complicated for a workaround system. Simply put, we're running out of drinking water. No water, no vault. This is crucial to our survival. And frankly, I, I think you're the only hope we have. Yes, puppy. I mean, you need sir. to go find us another controller chip. We estimate we have four to five months before the vault runs out of water. Mm -hmm. We need that chip. We marked your map with the location of another vault. Not a bad place to start, I think. 
look. Just be safe. Okay? And just like that, we're off. <laughs> oh, look at these cinematics, dude. These, like, late 90s cinematics, they get me. I don't know why. I think because, like... And it just reminds me of my childhood more than anything. Because I remember these were, like, super, super freaking cool. And just like that, we leave the vault. And here we are, playing Fallout. <laughs> We're in it, dude. So as you can see, it is a top-down view. Um, there's actually a term for this, which I forget. Let me Google it. Ah, I found it. It is a trimetric projection game, meaning the direction of viewing is such that all the three axes of space appear unequally foreshortened. The scale along each of the three axes and the angles among them are determined separately as dictated by the angle of viewing. Who knew? <laughs> you might just think that it's isometric, but it isn't actually just isometric. It's actually a little bit more elaborate than that. There's different flavors of it. Now, as you can see, as we move, this little bar at the bottom is draining. That's because all of Fallout, the original game, is built around uh, a system that's based on time, similar to other tabletop RPGs. And it's something we kind of got away from in later years where games started just being in real time. So anything that you were doing, other characters and enemies were doing things as well. However, in this original game, it all was still based and built on tabletop RPG mechanics. And so they basically just would put a tabletop RPG system into a computer format so that you could enjoy it yourself without necessarily having to have 10 people with you sitting around a table. And there are some mods and things you could do to tweak it and change it, but fundamentally Fallout just works in a time-based, kind of turn-based uh, system. You can see in here, you can actually tweak the combat speed, which just changes how quickly enemies move on their turns, basically. So as I run over here, you'll see them move a little bit faster. And I'm just going to make my way out of the vault into the wastes. Now, of course, one of the most recognizable parts of Fallout is the special system, which you might recognize from the strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck, or S-P-E-C-I-A-L, special system. And it's very unique, very different from a lot of other role-playing systems, but it wasn't actually supposed to be that way. They wanted to use the GURPS system, which is a, a sort of role-playing standard that was developed back in, I believe, the 80s. However, after licensing it, they started working on Fallout, and when they discussed what they were doing with the guys that owned and made the GURPS system, they weren't that thrilled because they were describing Fallout as a very dark, gory, and violent game that was going to have a lot of messy stuff in it, and they didn't like that. So they actually took matters into their own hands and created the special system, which now is so iconic within Fallout, which is just kind of a fun thing that this very unique, very iconic thing you recognize from Fallout games was not something they wanted to do from the outset. It was kind of an accident that they ended up doing it because the other creators of the other system didn't like the violence that Fallout was going to be known for. But let's make our way out. You can see as we approach certain areas of interest, you get a little message down here in the bottom left of your pit boy saying to the west, you can see a natural light for the first time in your life. You are looking at the outside world and I'm just going to make my way out as the rats chase me. And once I reach the outside world, we will be in the wastes. There we go. And then we shift over. Classic Fallout. Load screens and all. <laughs> and then we go into the next zone. So we're in the mountains. I can keep traveling if I want. You can see I can kind of pan around. We're trying to head up here. So I'm going to mark that. And we're going to try to travel that way. And you can see it's actually simulating time behind my head right there. 
as we travel across the wastes. Now, right here, you see we came across this little area. So if I go over here and I try to go in, if I click on this little icon, it will actually allow me to travel to the entrance. And just like that, I am in a little encampment and I can go up. I can try to approach these. Um, you can see to the south, you see an adobe wall surrounding a peaceful looking village. Interesting. You can see we've got whole little villages, beds, different NPCs to interact with, all sorts of stuff. And thankfully, because there aren't enemies aggroed to me, there is not a turn-based thing going on. I just get to move around in real time, which is nice. But okay, while traveling, I got jumped by some scorpions. So you can see I'm currently unarmed. I don't have any stuff. So I can try to just punch them or kick them. <laughs> just drop kick them and it takes time and action points to actually do that uh you see you can you need three action points in order to actually deal an attack so with that i'm going to um just pass probably get killed i'm in trouble oh my god this is awful run away they're chasing me down there we go. Okay, we escaped. <laughs> sort of. This is also my bad. I didn't equip anything, so I just have, like, <laughs> just been punching things. I, I didn't even think to check, so oopsie. Okay, much better. We took the stim pack. Now we're healed up. We can go off on our merry way to the other vault. Let's see. Vault 15. Let's go inside, see what we're, we're dealing with. You can see it's just like a shed. Okay, is there anything inside? Anybody? A ladder. Not even like an elaborate entrance. They say, you can see, this is an old shack. It's barely standing and seems to have been looted long ago. A small shack is all that it remains in this area. Fortunately, your records indicate a secondary entrance to Vault 15 is here. So, let's try going down and in. Uh-oh. That don't look good. Someone broke in. Oh, and then we're being attacked by a rat. Okay. Oh my god, there's a big dude. Okay, this is not good. I'm the giant rat that makes all of the rules. Booyah. Dead. Sucks to suck. And I'm dead. <laughs> Killed by rats. <laughs> Your life ends in the wasteland. Oh. Yeah, it took me a minute to figure out how to use my gun. I'm gonna be real. I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize I could swap inventory. It's okay. Okay, now I'm gonna shoot him. Plop, plop. And then try to walk a little bit. Gonna get attacked by a rat. Attacked by man bear pig again. Squeak. Did I accidentally kill the rat instead? Damn it. No, okay, okay, we're good. Not that good, but we're, we're not. Totally screwed. Okay. Okay. Gonna heal myself up just a wee bit. There we go. And then I can go in here and I can like put that there so I'm ready and then swap to this. And then I'm gonna shoot the rat. Bra bra. Okay. I think we're 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 gonna be okay now. You are victorious in combat. You've gained 25 XP. You're damn right I have. So it looks like I need something else to get down the elevator shaft and continue exploring the vault. So I've come back to uh, a little place which you might recognize and we're gonna try to talk to some people. So you can see we can open up a conversation with this guy. I'd like some information. What do you wanna know about? And it basically just has a step-by-step dialogue tree that you can go down and it has this for many 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 characters with all sorts of information that could be useful your business in shady sands might be look at this wow i i've seen like the clips of this and i vaguely remember this from when i tried fallout a long time ago these like old school renderings and it's kind of like stop motion because it's not actually in full resolution or full frame rates or anything it's a little trippy know that seth and i will be watching you mm. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean there's there's a definite learning curve to this the controls are a little wonky games don't tend to control like this anymore for good reason because it's pretty clunky but once you get an understanding of how it works it's pretty damn intuitive you know you can right click you get this little investigative 
uh, pointer that you can point at different things. It'll tell you, oh, you see Raslo, as you can see in the bottom left, Raslo's wife over here. And you can talk with them if you want. So like if I wanted to have a conversation with him, it opens up here. And then if I just want to bail, I can just do that, leave. But I need to go talk to a very specific character. So if I'm looking for that guy, I can just kind of inspect around, see who I spot, and we'll try to talk to the right guy. Okay, so I want some rope that looks like sausage, and I'm gonna trade some flares for that stuff. This should be a good deal, so let's see. That's a good trade, we do it. And then I get the rope and I'm good to go. So now I can bail. I'm gonna head back to the vault over here, and now I should be able to use the rope to climb down into the lower section of the vault that I couldn't access before. At least that's my... That's my guess. I can skip past the initial wandering. I can just fast travel right inside, go over here. And then if I equip the rope and then go over here, I can use the rope and target this, tie it down. You successfully sling a rope down into the elevator shaft. Awesome. And then I should be able to grab it and climb down. Just like that. And there's rats. Gotta love the rats. Rats. We're rats. We're the rats. So, I mean, you're probably seeing just how many layers of complexity there are here. There are so many things you can miss just simply because you didn't look around that corner. You didn't think to combine this thing or that thing. It's very, very open-ended by design. And that's part of what people have loved about Fallout as a game series since its inception. I mean, the fact that it was so open-ended and you could just make your own stories, create your own solutions. Uh, it's super, super interesting and keeps you engaged long-term for sure. And there's so many little things, like you might discover that you can use your uh, doctor ability. If you have certain skill points assigned there if sufficiently, you can do like first aid or doctor. Let's do first aid on ourselves and then you see, we heal for four hit points. We don't even need to use our stims. I've been wasting them like a chump. Oh, I'm definitely taking this leather jacket and more rope. Rope for days, boys. Look at this. What is what is this? A black heavy leather jacket. It weighs five pounds. Now I look cool. Look at that. Wow. Love it. Guess where you just got into cool guy zone. <laughs> But this right here is where all of the magic started. This is the game that Todd and Emil and those guys would have played way back in the day that got the gears turning and excited them at the prospect of what they could one day achieve themselves. And I think in some ways, you know, Bethesda came along and added their own spin to it, which was a very unique Bethesda Game Studios spin that only they are really able to do to just create an open sandbox type game that's just about raw fun, even if it's not super grounded or realistic or intense. It's just about the fun of the game. And they pulled it off with Fallout 3 and then, you know, Obsidian came in and did a great job with Fallout New Vegas and then Fallout 4 comes. Then we get Fallout 76, which we won't talk about. And now we have the show that has a lot of people getting introduced to the show or to the franchise rather for the first time in their lives which is awesome and i think you can see with this game even though it's pretty clunky being a what uh 27 year old game it's it's still got some charm to it you know it's not gonna be for everybody because naturally games like this have a bit of a learning curve to them they're not that intuitive anymore and some people just frankly aren't fans of old school tabletop inspired rpgs and that's okay but hopefully this was at least an interesting delve into where all of this started and how Fallout in this early, early form laid the foundation for what would eventually become a multi-billion dollar franchise. But with that, I'm going to keep chugging along. Thanks for watching. I love you all dearly. Like I said at the top, if you're interested in seeing a review from me on the whole show, let me know. I just don't know if it's worth 
the time and trouble to do it and to wrangle with the copyright system. But if you're interested, let me know in the comment section. But that's gonna do it for me. Thank you for watching. I love you all dearly. Make sure to subscribe here and make sure to subscribe over on Luke Stevens Live, my second channel, where pretty much any video that doesn't fit on the main channel ends up and we do streams, have a great time. It's awesome. We're about to hit 100K over there as well. So go check it out. But with all that, I love you dearly. I'll see you in the next one. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.